Hey everyone, I thought I'd do something a little bit different here. I thought I'd uh, show everybody this book about the making of Metal Gear Solid 2. Now, it's all in Japanese. I don't read or speak Japanese, but I thought it'd be pretty cool to show off. There's a lot of stuff in here that, that isn't shown in the uh, document of Metal Gear Solid 2. And when you open it up, the first thing in here is uh, a little fold-out poster. I think a lot of people have seen this... Uh, this poster, this art. I don't know exactly who did this art. I don't believe it was Yoji Shinkawa, but anyways, that's first thing in there. There's Hideo Kojima looking nice and handsome, of course. Nice little sweater he's got there. Reading a book, very intelligent. Here you see Grand Theft Auto 3 mentioned here. GTA 3, I think, just came out like a like two weeks or something like that before Metal Gear Solid 2 came out. And, uh, you know, in the West, obviously, Grand Theft Auto is, is much more popular than, you know, Hideo Kojima's big budget action blockbuster, the Hollywood film composer. Fantastic graphics. <clears throat> and here is the production timeline. From the time that uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 was released. All the way up until the time that MGS 2 was released. All the significant dates. Actually all this stuff you can go and look for yourself on the, the document of Metal Gear Solid 2. And if you're interested in seeing a good video about the making of Metal Gear Solid 2, I would check out a video called The Fabrication of Metal Gear Solid 2 on YouTube. It's definitely, I would say, the best video about the making of Metal Gear Solid 2 for sure. <clears throat> Scriptment. And you see the date here uh, on the scriptment, 11-12-98. It's hard to believe how quickly Kojima and his team went to work on this thing right after MGS1 came out. There you see some pictures of Kojima and his team. In the pre-planning stages. There you see the Legos. Kojima often used Legos to help come up with the level design and things like that. You see the big shell layout, the tanker. There you see Snake in a penguin suit. I think a, a concept that didn't quite make it into the game. And all this stuff can be found in the art of Metal Gear Solid 2. The art book, great art book, worth checking out. And here's Raiden. Some early sketches. Some of these early sketches, you can see a very extra feminine looking Raiden. And that was just something you were seeing a lot of at that time in, in Japanese, you know, otaku culture. You know, that androgynous look was just huge. It was everywhere. I like some of these early designs for Solidus. Here's some different designs for uh, Rosemary. <clears throat> that's that's kind of similar to her later look in MGS4, isn't it?
I like these little sketches. Not something you see very often from Yoji Shinkawa. I think these are meant to be like, you know, like digital avatars, kind of like what you see with Otacon on the computer, you know. Some different designs for Vamp as well. Vamp was originally supposed to be a woman, as you can see here. Here's some of the rejected characters. Chinaman. Old boy. Max. And Doc. Now the names Max and Doc were taken from the novel um, City of Glass. <clears throat> and here's Metal Gear Ray. Much like Raiden, I think the design for Metal Gear Ray is kind of indicative of the otaku culture at the turn of the 21st century. You know, I mean, Evangelion was really huge in the late 90s, and I think the mecha designs on that show were, were definitely influential to a lot of the mecha designs that came after that, you know, with the sharp edges and the, you know, the more sleeker design, as opposed to the blocky sort of old school mech of, of Rex. There you see uh, Motosada Mori, the military advisor for the Metal Gear series. Um, he actually served with the French Foreign Legion as well as the Japanese Self-Defense Force. And actually before that he had, he had written several books uh, about you know military tactics and weaponry and stuff. And he also wrote the, uh, the audio drama that came out. Some research materials a little stack of books here it's kind of hard to see but that red book right there it's called uh, the new world of russian small arms and ammo and i was actually written in uh, 1998 so it's pretty up to date for that time then there's another book i can't see the title of it but it seems to be about the gsg9 the german uh, counterterrorism unit And then here you see a shot that was cut from the final game of Arsenal Gear crashing into Manhattan with, uh, with the World Trade Center very close by, as you can see. That was all removed after the events of 9-11. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of people, you know, comment on how Metal Gear Solid 2 is, is partially uh, a commentary on the information age, but... I think the events of 9-11 definitely played a major role in, in that age. Final score, 10 out of 10. That's from IGN. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of funny how IGN gave arguably the three most divisive games in the Metal Gear series uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, 4, and 5 gave them all perfect 10 out of 10 scores. It's very generous. And here you see a couple screenshots from the Metal Gear Solid uh, Premium Preview. And this came out, this is like a day or two before the game was released in Japan. And there you can see that Raiden was indeed unveiled to the Japanese public prior to the game's release. And since I don't have a computer and my phone really sucks, I'm going to wrap it up for now. But I'm going to do a second part where I'll show off more of the stuff that you won't see in the document of Metal Gear Solid 2.